द मैजिक ऑफ थिंकिंग बिग रिटर्न बाय डेविड जे स्वार्ड्स आई विल बी रीडिंग दिस बुक इट हैज अ टोटल ऑफ थर्टीन चैप्टर्स एंड टुडे वी विल बी रीडिंग द फर्स्ट चैप्टर द फर्स्ट चैप्टर इज टाइटल एज बिलीव यू कैन सक्सीड एंड यू विल सो नाउ लेट्स बिगिन द फर्स्ट चैप्टर सक्सेस मीन्स मेनी वंडरफुल पॉजिटिव थिंग्स सक्सेस मीन्स पर्सनल प्रोस्पेरिटी अ फाइन होम वैकेशंस ट्रैवल न्यू थिंग्स फाइनेंशियल सिक्योरिटी गिविंग योर चिल्ड्रेन मैक्सिम एडवांटेजेस सक्सेस मीन्स विनिंग एडमाइरेशन लीडरशिप बींग लुक अप टू बाई पीपल इन योर बिजनेस एंड सोशल लाइफ सक्सेस मीन्स फ्रीडम फ्रीडम फ्रॉम वरीज फियर्स frustrations and failure success means self respect continually finding more real happiness and satisfaction from life being able to do more for those who depend on you success means winning success achievement is the goal of life every human being wants success everybody wants the best this life can deliver nobody enjoys crawling living in mediocrity No one likes feeling second class and feeling forced to go that way. Some of the most practical success building wisdom is found in that biblical quotation stating that faith can move mountains. Believe, really believe, you can move a mountain and you can. Not many people believe that they can move mountains. So, as a result, not many people do. on some occasion you have probably you have probably heard someone say something like it's nonsense to think that you can make a mountain move away just by saying move mountain move it's simply impossible people who think this way have belief confused with wishful thinking and true enough you can't wish away a mountain you can't wish yourself into an executive suite nor can you wish yourself into a five bedroom three bath house or the high income brackets you can't wish yourself into a position of leadership but you can move a mountain with belief you can win success by believing you can succeed there is nothing magical or mystical about the power of belief belief works this way believe the i am positive i can attitude generates the power skill and energy needed to do it When you believe I can do it the how to do it develops every day all over the nation young people start working in new jobs each of them wishes that some day he could enjoy the success that goes with reaching the top but the majority of these young people simply don't have the belief that it takes to reach the top ranks and they don't reach the top believing it's impossible to climb climb high they do not discover the steps that lead to great heights their behavior remains that of the average person but a small number of these young people really believe they will succeed they approach their work with the i am going to the top attitude and with substantial belief there is the top believing they will succeed and that it's not impossible these folks study and observe the behavior of senior executives they learn how successful people approach problems and make decisions They observe the attitude of successful people. The how to do it always comes to the person who believes he can do it. A young woman I'm acquainted with decided two years ago that she was going to establish a sales agency to sell mobile homes. She was advised by many that she shouldn't and could not do it. She had less than three thousand in savings, and she was advised that the minimum capital investment required was many times that. Look how competitive it is. she was advised and besides what practical experience have you had in selling mobile homes let alone managing a business her advisor asked but this young lady had belief in herself and her ability to succeed she quickly admitted that she lacked capital that the business was very competitive and that she lacked experience but she said all the evidence i can gather shows up that the mobile home industry is going to expand On top of that, I have studied my competition. I know I can do a better job of market merchandising trailers than anybody else in the town. I expect to make some mistakes, but I am going to be on top in a hurry. And she was. She had little trouble getting capital. 
her absolutely unquestioned belief that she could succeed with the with this business won her the confidence of two investors and armed with complete belief she did the impossible she got a trailer manufacturer to advance her a limited inventory with no money down last year she sold over 1 million worth of trailers next year she says i expect to gross over 2 million believe strong belief triggers the mind to figure ways and means and how to and believing you can succeed makes others place confidence in you most people do not put much stock in belief but some the residents of successful villa usa do just a few weeks ago a friend who is an official with a state highway department in a midwestern state related a mountain moving experience to me last month my friend began our department sent notices to a number of engineering companies that we were authorized to return from to return some from to design eight bridges as part of our highway building program the bridges were to be built at a cost of 5 million the engineering firm selected would get a 4% commission or 200000 for its design work I talked with 21 engineering firms about this. The four largest decided right away to submit proposals. The other 17 companies were small, having only 3 to 7 engineers each. The each of the projects scared of 16 of the 17. They were they went over the project, shook their heads and said, "In effect, in effect, it's too big for us. I wish I thought we could handle it, but it's no use even trying." but one of these small firms a company with only 3 engineers studied the plans and said we can do it we'll submit a proposal they did and they got the job those who believe they can move mountains do those who believe they can't cannot belief triggers the power to do actually in this modern times belief is doing much bigger than things is doing much bigger things than moving mountains The most essential element in fact the essential element in our space explorations today is belief that space can be mastered without firm unwavering belief that men can travel in space our scientists would not have the courage interest and enthusiasm to proceed belief that cancer can be cured will ultimately produce cures for cancer Currently there is some talk of building a tunnel under the English Channel to connect England with the continent whether this tunnel is ever built depends on whether responsible people believe it can be built belief in great results is the driving force the power behind all great books plays scientific discoveries belief in success is behind every successful business charts and political organization Belief in success is the one basic absolutely essential ingredient of successful people. Believe, really believe, you can succeed and you will. Over the years I have talked with many people who have failed in business ventures and in various careers. I have heard a lot of reasons and excuses for failures. Something ex- something especially significant unfolds as conversations with failures develop. In a in a casual sort of way the failure drops a remark like to tell the truth i did not think it would work or i had my misgivings before i even started out or actually i wasn't too surprised that it did not work out the okay i'll give it a try but i don't think it will work attitude produces failures this belief is a negative power when the mind this believes or doubts the mind attracts reasons to support the disbelief doubt disbelief the subconscious will to fall fail the not really wanting to succeed is responsible for most failures think doubt and fail think victory and succeed a young fiction writer talked with me recently about about her writing ambitions the name of one of the top writers in her field came up oh she said mr x is a wonderful writer but of course i can't be nearly as successful as he is her attitude disappointed me very much because i know the writer mentioned he is not super intelligent not super perceptive not super anything else except super confident he believes he is among the best and so he can acts and so he acts and performs the best it is well 
to respect the leader learn from him observe him study him but don't worship him believe you can surpass believe you can go beyond those who harbor the second best attitude are invariably second best doers look at this way belief is the thermostat that regulates what we can accomplish in life study the fellow who is suffering down there in mediocrity he believes he is worth little so he receives little he believes he can't do big things and he does not he believes he is unimportant so everything he does has unimportant mark as time goes by lack of belief in himself shows through in the way the fellow talks walks and acts unless he unless he adjusts his thermostat forward he shrinks grows smaller and smaller in his own estimation and since others see in us what we see in ourselves he grows smaller in the estimation of people around him now look across the way at the person who is advancing forward he believes he is worth much and he receives much he believes he can handle big diffi- difficult assignments and he does everything he does the way he handles himself with people his character his thoughts his viewpoints and all say he he is a professional he is an important person a person is a product of his own thoughts believe big adjust your thermostat forward launch your success offensive with honest sincere belief that you can succeed believe big and grow big Several years ago after addressing a group of businessmen in Detroit I talked with one of the gentlemen who approached me introduced himself and said I really enjoyed your talk can you spare a few minutes I'd like very much to discuss a personal experience with you In a few minutes we were comfortably seated in a coffee shop waiting for some refreshments I have a personal experience he began that ties in perfectly with what you said this evening about making your mind work for you instead of letting it work against you I have never explained to anyone how I lifted myself out of the world of mediocrity but I'd like to tell you about it and I'd like to hear it I said well just 5 years ago I was plodding along just another guy working in the tool and dye trade i made a decent living by average standards but it was far from ideal our home was much too small and there was no money for those many things we wanted my wife bless her did not complain much but it was written all over her that she was more resigned to her fate than she was happy inside i grew more and more dissatisfied When I let myself see how I was failing my good wife and two children I really hurt inside but today things are really different my friend continued today we have a beautiful new home on a 2 acre lot and a year round cabin a couple hundred miles north of here there's no more worry about whether we can send the kids to a good college and my wife no longer has to feel guilty every time she spends some money for some new clothes Next summer the whole family is flying to Europe to spend a month's holiday. We are really leaving. How this all happened? I asked. It all happened, he continued, when to use the phrase you used tonight. I harnessed the power of belief. 5 years ago I learned about a job with a tool and dye company here in Detroit. We were living in Cleveland at that time. I decided to look into it hoping I could make a little more money. I got here early on Sunday evening, but the interview was not until Monday. After dinner, I sat down in my hotel room and for some reason, I got really disgusted with myself. Why? I asked myself. Am I just a middle class failure? Why am I trying to get a job that represents such a small step forward? I don't know how to this day what prompted me to do it but I took a sheet of hotel stationery and wrote down the names of five people I have known well for several years who had far surpassed me in earning power and job responsibility two were former neighbors who had moved away to find subdivisions two others were fellows I had worked for and the third was a brother in law next again i don't know what made to do this what made me do this i asked myself 
what do my five friends have that I don't have besides better jobs? I compared myself with them on intelligence, but I honestly could not see that they excelled excel in the branch department. Nor could I truthfully say that they had me beat on education, integrity, or personal habits. Finally, I got down to another success quality, one hears a lot about initiative. Here, I hated to admit it, but I had to. On this point, my record showed I was far below that of my successful friends. It was now about 3 am, but my mind was astonishingly clear. I was seeing my weak points for the first time. I discovered that I had held back. I had always carried a little stick. I dug into myself deeper and deeper and found the reason. I lacked initiative was because I did not believe inside that I was worth very much. I sat there the rest of the night just reviewing how lack of faith in myself had dominated me ever since. I could remember how I had used my mind to work against myself. I found I had been preaching to myself why I couldn't get ahead instead of why I could. I had been selling myself short. I found this streak of self-deprecation soared through in everything I did. Then it dawned on me that no one else was going to believe me in me until I believed in myself. Right then I decided I'm through feeling second class. From here on, I am not going to sell, sell myself short. Next morning, I still had that confidence. During the job interview, I gave my newfound confidence its first taste. Before coming for the interview, I had hoped I would have courage to ask for 750 or even 1000 more than my present job was paying. But now, after realizing I was a valuable man, I opted it to 300. 3500 and I got it. I sold myself because after that one long night of self-analysis, I found things in myself that made me a lot more sellable. Within two years after I took that job, I had established a reputation as a fellow who can get business. Then we went into recession. This made me still more valuable because I was one of the best business getters in the industry. The company was reorganized and I was given a substantial amount of stock plus a lot more pay. Believe in yourself and good things to start happening. Your mind is a thoughtful factory. It's a busy factory producing countless thoughts in one day. Production in your thoughts factory is under the charge of two foremen, one of whom we will call Mr. Triumph and the other Mr. Defeat. Mr. Triumph is in the charge of manufacturing positive thoughts. He specializes in producing reasons why you can, why you are qualified, why you will. The other foreman, Mr. Defeat, produces negative, deprecating thoughts. He is your expert in develop, developing reasons why you can't, why you are weak, why you are inadequate. His speciality is the why you will fail chain of thoughts. Both Mr. Triumph and Mr. Defeat are intensely obedient. They snap to attention immediately. All you need do to signal either foreman is to give the slightest mental beck and call. If the signal is positive, Mr. Triumph will step forward and go to work. Likewise, a negative signal brings Mr. Defeat forward. To see how these two foremen work for you, try this example. Tell yourself, today is a lousy day. This signals Mr. Defeat into action and he manufactures some facts to prove that you are right. He suggests to you that it's too hot or it's too cold, business will be bad today, sales will drop, other people will be on edge, you may get sick, your wife will be in a fuzzy mood. Mr. Defeat is tremendously efficient. In just a few moments, he's got you sold. It is a bad day. Before you know it, it is a heck of a bad day. But tell yourself, today is a fine day and Mr. Triumph is signal for what to act. He tells you, this is a wonderful day. The weather is refreshing. It's good to be alive. Today you can catch up on some of your work. And then it is a good day. In like fashion, 
Mr. Defeat can show you why you can't sell, Mr. Smith. Mr. Triumph will show you that you can. Mr. Defeat will convince you that you will fail while Mr. Triumph will demonstrate why you will succeed. Mr. Defeat will prepare a brilliant case against Tom while Mr. Triumph will show you more reasons why you like Tom. Now, the more work you give either of these two foremen, the stronger he becomes. If Mr. Defeat is given more work to do, he has personal and takes up more space in your mind. Eventually, he will take over the entire thought manufacturing division and virtually all thought will be of negative nature. The only wise thing to do is fire Mr. Defeat. You don't need him. You don't want him around telling you that you can't, you're not up to it, you will fail and so on. Mr. Defeat won't help you get where you want to go, so boot him out. Use Mr. Triumph 100% of the time. When any thought enters your mind, ask Mr. Triumph to go to work for you. He'll show you how you can succeed. Between now and tomorrow, at this time, another 11,500 new consumers will have made their grand entry into the USA. Population is growing at a record rate. In, this, in the next 10 years, the increase is conservatively estimated at 35 million. That's equal to the present combined metropolitan population of our five biggest cities, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Detroit, and Philadelphia. New industries, new scientific breakthroughs, expanding markets, all spell opportunity. This is good news. This is the most wonderful time to be alive. All signs point to a record demand for top-level people in every field. People who have superior ability to influence others, to direct their work, to serve them in leadership capacity. And the people who will fill these leadership positions are all adults or near adults right now. One of them is you. The guarantee of a boom is not, of course, a guarantee of personal success. Over the long pull, the United States has always been booming, but just a few glances shows that millions and millions of people, in fact, a majority of them, struggle but don't really succeed. The majority of folks still plug along in mediocrity, despite the record opportunity of the last two decades. And in the boom period ahead, most people will continue to worry, to be afraid, to crawl through life feeling unimportant, unappreciated not able to do what they want to do. As a result, their performance will earn them petty rewards, petty happiness. Those who convert opportunity into reward will be those wise people who learn how to think themselves into success. Walk in. The door to success is open wider than ever before. Put yourself on record now that you are going to join that select group that is getting what it wants from life. Here is the first step towards success. It's a basic step. It can't be avoided. Step 1. Believe in yourself. Believe you can succeed. How to develop the power of belief. Here are the three guides to acquiring and strengthening the power of belief. First, think success. Don't think failure. At work, in your home, substitute success thinking for failure thinking. When you face a difficult situation, think, I'll win, not I'll probably lose. When you compete with someone else, think, I'm equal to the best, not I'm outclassed. When opportunity appears, think, I can do it, never I can't. Let the master thought, I will succeed, dominate your thinking process. Thinking success conditions your mind to create plans that produce success. Thinking failure does the exact opposite. Failure thinking conditions the mind to think other thoughts that produce failure. Second, remind yourself regularly that you are better than you think you are. Successful people are not supermen. Success does not require a super intellect, nor is there anything mystical about success. And success is not based on luck. Successful people are just ordinary folks who have developed belief in themselves and what they do. Never yes, never sell yourself short. And the third point, believe big. The size of your success is determined by the size of your belief. Think little goals and expect little achievements. 
think big goals and big big success remember this too big ideas and big plans are often easier certainly no more difficult than small ideas and small plans mr ralph j cordiner chairman of the board of the general electric company said this to a leaders leadership conference we need from every man who aspires to leadership for himself and his company a determination to undertake a personal program of self development nobody is going to order a man to develop whether a man lags behind or moves ahead in his specialty is a matter of his own personal application this is something which takes time work and sacrifice nobody can do it for you Mr. Cordiner's advice is sound and practical. Live it. Persons who reach the top rungs in business management, selling, engineering, religious work, writing, acting, and in every other pursuit get there by following conscientiously and continuously a plan for self-development and growth. Any training program. And that's exactly what this book is. Must do three things. It must provide content. the what to do second it must supply a method the how to do it and third it must meet the acid test that is get results the what of your personal training program for success is built on the attitudes and techniques of successful people how do they manage themselves how do they overcome obstacles how do they on the respect of others what sets them what sets them apart from the ordinary how do they think the how of your plan for development and growth is a series of concrete guides for action these are found in each chapter these guides work apply them and see for yourself what about the most important part of training results wrap up briefly conscientious application of the program presented here will bring you success and on a scale that may now look impossible broken down into its components your personal training program for success will bring you a series of reward the reward of deeper respect from your family the reward of admiration from your friends and associates the reward of feeling useful of being someone of having status the reward of increased income and a higher standard of living your training is self administered There will be no one standing over your shoulder telling you what to do and how to do it. This book will be your guide, but only you can understand yourself. Only you can command yourself to apply this training. Only you can evaluate your progress. Only you can bring about corrective action should you sleep a little. In short, you are going to train yourself to achieve bigger and bigger success. You already have a fully equipped laboratory in which you can work and study. Your laboratory is all around you. Your laboratory consists of human beings. This laboratory supplies you with every possible example of human action. And there is no limit to what you can learn once you see yourself as a scientist in your own lab. What's more? There is nothing to buy. There is no rent to pay. There are no fees of any kind. You can use this laboratory as much as you can, as much as you like, for free. As director of your own laboratory, you will want to do what every scientist does: observe and experiment. Isn't it surprising to you that most people understand so little about why people act as they do, even though they are surrounded by people all their lives? Most people are not trained observers. One important purpose of this book is to help you train yourself to observe, to develop deep insight into human action. You will want to ask yourself questions like, why is Tom so successful and Tom just getting by? Why do some people have many friends and other people have only few friends? Why will people gladly accept one what one person tells them but ignore another person who tells them the same thing? Once trained, you will learn valuable lessons just through the very simple process of observing there are two special suggestions to help you make yourself a trained observer select for special study the most successful and the most unsuccessful person you know 
Then, as the book unfolds, observe how closely your successful friend adheres to the success principle. Notice also how studying the two extremes will help you see the unmistakable wisdom of following the truths outlined in this book. Each contact you make with another person gives you a chance to see success development principles at work. Your objective is to make successful action habitual. The more we practice, the sooner it becomes second nature to act in the desired way. Most of us have friends who grow things for a hobby. And we have all heard them say something like, It's exciting to watch those plants grow. Just look how they respond to plant food and water. See how much bigger they are today than they were last week. To be sure, it is thrilling to watch what can happen when men cooperate carefully with nature. But it is not one tenth as fascinating as watching yourself respond to your own carefully administered thought management program. It's fun to feel yourself growing more confident, more effective, more successful day by day, month by month. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And this life gives you more satisfaction than knowing you are on the road to success and achievement. And nothing stands as a bigger challenge than making the most of yourself. So the chapter 1 ends here. And next time I will be reading the chapter 2. Thank you.